Ladies and gentlemen, it is 11 o'clock here in Leiden. I don't know what time it is at your place. Uh, I hope it's not too early and perhaps also not too late. Anyhow, um, my name is uh, Willem Vogelsang. I'm the Deputy Director of the International Institute for Asian Studies here in Leiden, the Netherlands. Again, it's August, it's beautiful weather outside. Um, as you may know, we have a series of lectures which we do online uh, since three, four months. Also, of course, in connection with the, uh, the corona pandemic. Um, it's mostly our fellows, uh, people we invite uh, to come to Leiden, to, my, to our institute, to pursue their studies. They normally give uh, lunch lectures uh, with an, a normal audience, you know, face to face. But of course, the last three, four months, that is uh, not possible, not in Holland anyhow. And so, so we pr prefer to do it online. So today we introduce to you one of our fellows, and he is from Iran. Um, his name, um, I have to speak, um, uh, Amir Bahram, Amir Bahram Arabahmadi. Um, he is from the University of Tehran, and um, he's the head of the Central and Southern Africa departments. He also used to work as the uh, cultural attaché in uh, various embassies well, for the Iranian government, various embassies in Africa. And his main field of studies at the moment, and that's why he's in Leiden, and that's what he's going to talk about, is the, uh, the many Baluchis who uh, are from Iran. It's a group that lives in southern Iran, southern Pakistan, but also along the Persian Gulf. Um, people who, over the centuries, uh, many of them moved to eastern Africa. And, um, well, many of them still living there, uh, part of society there in eastern Africa. And um, Amir Bahram is going to talk about them, their history, their position right now. Very interesting subject, I think. Um, so I would like to give the floor to uh, Amir Bahram. Um, Amir Bahram, uh, the floor is yours. Go ahead. And good morning to everybody. Um, as my friend Willem introduced me, my name is um, Adam Ahmadi. Uh, the subject I'm going to talk about it today, as you can see, is a sociological approach on the immigration of the Iranian Baluchis to East Africa. Um, I'm trying to uh, talk uh, in the framework time of 30 minutes, then if you have any question, I would be at your uh, service. Uh, as William mentioned, um, this is actually a unique um, subject and I have tried to get information as much as possible about uh, this almost exclusive um, uh, subject. The core message I want to convey to those participants is, though difficult, but targeted migration will bring fruitful and beneficial results. This is the core message of most of the immigration from a certain place to the other place, and this has happened to um, Iranian descent Baluchis who have migrated from Iran to East African countries that we are going to talk about it right now. My main subject, as I've already mentioned, is about immigration of um, Baluchis from Iran and in particular from Sistan and Baluchistan province and the permanent settlement in East African countries, uh, once again, in particular in Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda, and of course, some other countries in the region that I'm going to talk about them. Um, talking about literature review, I have to uh, acknowledge, although this subject is very important, uh, but very few research uh, has been done about 
this and very few scholars actually paid attention to this important subject. Central question in between is why Iranian descent Baluchis decided to migrate to East Africa. Uh, of course, you know, this migration have had some difficulties, but how uh, they have endured and how actually they uh, made a decision to do this hazardous migration. Uh, the hypothesis in uh, my uh, research project is um, Baluchis established very friendly relation with indigenous um, East African people. And my theoretical framework is based on two theory. First, migration theory of Professor Lahzai Zadeh, an Iranian sociologist. And second, uh, interaction, in, sorry, interactive acculturation model of Professor Boris, who is uh, a Canadian, Canadian sociologist. Um, First of all, um, if I want to brief you about immigration, although I'm not a sociologist, I'm a historian, but usually um, immigration or human migration uh, is a certain movement of people from a place to other place. It has happened uh, since long time ago uh, in in the course of history, since long, long time ago till now, uh, we have experienced quite a number of human migration. Uh, the main reasons of migration are usually based on uh, some factors, economic, social, political, all environmental. Immigration have impacts on both the place left behind and on the place where migrants settle. Um, as we are going to talk about um, immigration of Baluchis from Iran to East Africa, we will see some of this factor uh, has happened to them as well. Talking about uh, our main subject, first of all, let us see who's are Baluchis. Baluch uh, or Baluchis are an ethnic group inhabiting in Sistan and Baluchistan province in eastern and southeastern part of Iran. As you can see in the map, this is actually uh, the whole map of Iran, and this is the location of Sistan and Baluchistan province. Almost um, this province has been divided between uh, uh, non baluchis people who are living in northern and central part of Sistan and Baluchistan province, and southern uh, and almost eastern part of uh, Sistan and Baluchistan, which uh, has been occupied by Baluchis. Uh, of course, we have some other tribes in Iran, but Baluchi are one among other ethnic uh, groups of Iranian. They are um, one of the richest Iranian ethnic groups in terms of art, crafts, tradition and um, custom, and they are so proud of their own deep culture and custom. Okay, now um, have concentration to our uh, main subject. What are the main reasons for um, Baluchis that already migrated uh, to East Africa. Uh, usually, Sistan and Baluchistan province uh, is a dry and barren land uh, and since long time ago. 
till now, uh, people who are living in Sisanabalus Islam province are suffering of the shortage of uh, rain, scarce of water, and arid climate, and of course, strong winds, especially in the northern part of Sisan and Balochistan. Um, and of course, all of these um, are problem, sometimes major problem for agriculture, herding, and so on. That's why we have always seen limited opportunities uh, for people who are living in Sisan Balochistan to develop the agricultural activities and to enjoy uh, their own business which is affiliated to either herding or uh, agriculture or both of them. Apart from that, since uh, Sisan Balochistan is a dry and barren land, uh, in most cases they have experienced occasional famine and drought uh, in different parts of Sistan and Balochistan, which have had very bad effect to their own farm, garden, and of course, agriculture. Um, extreme poverty is another um, factor that pushed them uh, almost all the time to leave uh, Sistan and Balochistan to other places, other countries, um, actually uh, to find um, a way of uh, source of income. Um, Baluchis uh, have had, Iranian Baluchis, have had occasional conflict uh, with central government of Iran, especially during the time of Kacha dynasty, uh, followed with the establishment of Pahlavi dynasty. Um, in, in some cases, uh, even central government have had a big problem with some uh, Baluchi who had made a type of uprising. Uh, because of the cruelty of uh, Kajal uh, kings and of course Pahlavi kings to Baluchi people and in fact, ignored their own right. And of course, uh, all the time, at least uh, since 300 uh, years ago till now, they have received positive message from uh, their own uh, relative who had already settled in some part of East Africa that come to us, join us, uh, you can find a better future here, better actually a source of income. Uh, therefore, uh, this was another actually uh, reason for them for migrating to um, East Africa and other factors, uh, for example, uh, since the establishment of uh, uh, Islamic Republic uh, in Iran, uh, some Baluchis in some part of Sistan and Balochistan have faced some difficulty with, with some um, uh, gangs group or some smugglers uh, that actually have made big problem for uh, their own way of life. That's why all this uh, are main factors or main reasons for them to decide to actually uh, have a permanent uh, migration to uh, East Africa. Um, in this actually slide, you will see again the uh, location of Sisan and Baluchistan uh, province. Uh, and of course, uh, this is the location of East Africa. Uh, consistent of three main countries, Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. These three countries uh, have been main target for Baluchis who migrated from Sisanu, uh, Baluchistan. Okay, talking about the history of uh, migration of Baluchis, to East Africa. First of all, we have to mention about 
the role Omanid sultans uh, played in between. Uh, talking very briefly, uh, since 16th century, uh, Omanid kings uh, try to actually expand their position not only in um, Oman Sea and Persian Gulf uh, and uh, some shows of some part actually of uh, Indian Ocean, they started to fulfill their own expansionist purposes in East Africa based on uh, some requests they received from some Arab descent tribe who uh, were living in some part of uh, East African shores um, in order to actually go there and get rid them off from the cruelty of Portuguese who had already uh, had their own hegemony in um, East Africa. Of course, they accepted, uh, I mean, Omani King accepted to send uh, some of the army to uh, East African coast uh, to help um, and to fulfill the petition of um, Arab descent tribes uh, in East African coast. Uh, and of course, uh, the main reason was they wanted to actually replace the position of Portuguese. Um, in between, they were in need of some faithful uh, and loyal soldiers uh, and, of course, uh, professional, actually, warriors uh, to be sent to East Africa uh, because, you know, they knew they are, if they wanted to send uh, their forces to East Africa uh, to fight with Portuguese navies, they have to send very professional Various. And since long time ago, um, there have been uh, deep historical links between Baluchis and uh, Oman Sultanate, and um, all the time, Baluchis used to uh, either pay a short visit or just uh, move to Oman from Sistan and Baluchistan and live there. Um, as a source of income uh, and for survival. Uh, therefore, when uh, Omani uh, sultans of Oman Sultanate uh, thought about uh, sending some troops to East Africa to fight with Portuguese, they found out the best uh, solution is to send some Baluchi uh, professional warriors uh, because from one side, as I mentioned, they were very good warriors and from the other side, they were very loyal to Omani kings. Um, according uh, the history, in 1664, uh, uh, during the time of Imam Saif al uh, Yarubi, one of the king of Yarubi uh, dynasty of Oman. They sent the fleet, uh, a combination of uh, Baluchi soldiers and Omani soldiers, uh, heading by one uh, Baluchi commander known as Jamedal Amir Shahdat Kuta. They invaded to Mombasa, zigged it, and after some months, they captured Mombasa, which was one of the main headquarters of uh, Portuguese in East African coast. It was a great shock for Portuguese, and from the other side, it was a great victory for uh, Oman. Um, some dissipated battle continued between uh, Omanis and Portuguese up to the end of 16th, uh, 17th century. Um, then um, in 
1696, again, another group of Baluchis as well as Omani soldiers were sent again to East African coast, this time targeting uh, a very huge uh, fort, uh, the main headquarters of Portuguese or the last headquarters of Portuguese in the region. Uh, once again, the commander of this campaign was um, a Baluchi. They uh, surrounded for Jesus. Uh, it took approximately three years, and in, in uh, 1698 or 1699, they succeeded to capture for Jesus. And after that, we uh, can say Omani uh, sultans of uh, Oman Sultanate replaced uh, the position of. Uh, Portuguese. From the early uh, 18th century, Baluchi's gradual um, transfer started to East African coast by Omani Sultan, but up to the time of Sultan uh, Said, Sayyid Said, um, who actually moved uh, the capital of Sultanate of Oman from Muscat to Zanzibar in uh, 1840. Um, I can say there was not a permanent purpose of um, settlement of Baluchis in East Africa. And if some Baluchi had already settled in some part of East Africa, um, it was just for protecting of some Omani's garrison, not based on a regular basis. But as I'm going to explain more, uh, during the time of Sultan uh, Sayyid Said, uh, the third uh, king or Sultan of Al Abu Said, uh, the next dynasty after Al Yarubi. Uh, the capital of uh, Oman Sultanate moved permanently from uh, Muscat to uh, Zanzibar, and this opened a new era, not only for Omanis, but also for Baluchis. This is the way, actually, that Baluchis uh, moved from Sistan of Baluchistan to East African coast. This is Chabahal one of the greatest Iranian port even now uh, at the shores of Oman Sea in Sistan of Baluchistan. Um, as you can see, they used to actually go to Muscat or other port in Oman and by Omani ships, they used to actually uh, move to East African coast wives they were coming down usually um, along the coast of Yemen, uh, up to uh, very close to Bab al Mandab Strait, again uh, along the northern actually shores of today's Somalia, down uh, along the shores of Indian Ocean. Uh, as you can see, down again, uh, right up to, this is the location of Zanzibar Archipelago. So uh, they used to actually uh, come and, uh, and call in Zanzibar Archipelago and from Zanzibar, um, they could go to the other places. Uh, this is actually uh, for Jesus, as I mentioned, was the last Portuguese headquarter, which was actually uh, captured by Omani and Baluchis. Um, as I mentioned briefly, and because of the short of time, I, don't, uh, I cannot go through the details. In uh, 1840, um, a new era or a new story opened for Omanis as well as uh, Baluchis when the capital of Oman moved 
was shifted from Muscat to Zanzibar, and the name of Omani Sultanate changed to Sultanate of Oman and Zanzibar. And from that time, we can uh, see the migration of uh, Baluchis from either Sistan or Balochistan uh, directly to uh, Zanzibar, of course, or East African coast, or via Oman. But uh, in most cases, Omani uh, kings were uh, actually motivative factor of their migration. Um, and of course, uh, at first, they used to act as uh, guardians and uh, they were, you know, a special uh, part of um, uh, Omani kings of Zanzibar God, but gradually, they, due to the, you know, the faithfulness to Omani king of Zanzibar, they received some other commitment and some other responsibility. Um, uh, and this actually uh, very friendly and close collaboration of Baluchis with Omani King of Zanzibar continued up to arrival of European, including British uh, Empire and German Empire, who entered to East African coast. Uh, in particular to then Tanganyika and Zanzibar in almost uh, the first year of 1890s. Um, when British actually um, arrived to Zanzibar and prevailed their own hegemony, uh, the position of Omani kings of Zanzibar from executive king just changed to um, a ceremonial king. Although British uh, allowed Omani king of Zanzibar to have their own kingdom, but as I mentioned, um, the authority minimized uh, completely. And from that time, um, they just um, had a ceremonial position and uh, not more than that. Um, and of course, um, Baluchi uh, had to find out another uh, way of life because up to that time, um, they were at the service of Omani kings. And as I mentioned, a lot of responsibility was given to them by Omani king, but uh, not any more commitment or not any more responsibility. Although uh, Baluchis actually collaborated with European colonizers, British and Germany in some stages, uh, but since uh, British and Germany had their own soldiers, uh, especially uh, British uh, brought a lot of Indian, and uh, to them, Indian uh, soldiers were more uh, faithful than Baluchis or other nations. So this was uh, an ignition for Baluchis to find another job that we are going to talk about. It. Uh, therefore, whether they want it or not, and once again, I have to mention, although they received some responsibility by British and Germany, such as, for example, um, High Commissioner of some areas in Zanzibar and uh, Tanganyika, but uh, they started to uh, migrate again this time from Zanzibar to uh, today's Kenya, Tanganyika, and Uganda, even DRC and Somali, and settled there permanently to find other jobs uh, and, of course, to find another source of income. This is a picture, uh, the Baluchis who are present right now. Uh, now it, this is actually the signboard of Baluchi uh, Street in uh, Makadara in Mombasa. Um, talking about 
some general characteristics of East African Baluchis. One of the most important uh, uh, East African Baluch characteristic is um, maintaining and preserving their own culture and custom. One of them is prevalent now among them is speaking in Baluchi language either completely fluent or rather fluent, but still, you know, they stick to their own um, uh, mother tongue known as Baluchi language, and they are trying to speak Baluchi among themselves. Um, they are still persist to have traditional marriage um, and to have actually uh, intermarriage among themselves. Uh, traditional uh, attires and traditional dresses as well as traditional cuisine are very important to them and although they are living in East Africa for approximately 200 years or even more than that but still uh, they are going to have traditional dresses when they have any function. They commemorating their own national heroes they actually are very interested to their own traditional music, Baluchi music. Uh, they are very hospitable uh, people. I have seen their hospitality several times when I paid a short visit to Kenya and Tanzania uh, in the last years. And uh, of course, their patriotism, um, their prejudice to their own tribe, clans, nationality, and so. Therefore, although they are living in East Africa, but still they are trying to preserve their own culture and to display themselves as a traditional uh, Baluchi. This is a picture about some Baluchis in Zanzibar in 1962. Uh, talking about some mutual cultural effects uh, since they established very friendly relation with um, indigenous people of East Africa they uh, have received uh, some cultural um, component from Africans and of course they have given some part of the cultures to Africa um, of course uh, those items who uh, actually they have get from um, Africans. One of them is Swahili language. All the Baluchis are living in East Africa are very fluent in Swahili language. They have done some intermarriage with Swahili people and of course uh, Arab descent tribe who are living in um, uh, East Africa. Um, they liked um, African social life and they have accepted some part of African social life. Uh, um, they actually accepted some part of African superstitions and um, some scholars have mentioned uh, they have transferred some Swahili's cultural futures to Iran. We have a certain tra trans dance known as Gwati or Zal in uh, southern shores of Iran, and Gwati in particular in Sistan and Baluchistan is very prevalent among Baluchis, and some scholars are saying this uh, actually trans dance has been uh, shifted to Iran by uh, Baluchis. This is actually Gwati trans dance, and a Mama Zal is trying to reveal the one who uh, his body has been possessed by uh, demonic, uh, actually. Uh, and the effect, cultural effect and social effect, they had, they have had to African. First of all, um, they have actually. Um, entered some Baluchi words, although very few, uh, to Swahili language such as Baraza, such as Kalakhane, such as Shali, and so. And apart from that, we have had some uh, Baluchi scholars who 
have done uh, very good research about Swahili language and literature uh, and have written very knowledgeable article and even books. In terms of religious impacts, we have had some Baluchi preachers who have conveyed the message of Islam to Africans and converted some African to Islam, they have had some development impacts to some part of Tanzania and Kenya in the middle of uh, 19th century when they used to travel to interior area of uh, then Tanganyika and Kenya. Uh, some Baluchis imitated uh, a certain actually irrigation system, especially in today's Rujewa and Mbarali, uh, in almost uh, central part of Tanzania that they actually um, through this irrigation system uh, they diverted the water of some rivers from almost 10 kilometers away to their own uh, farms. For the first time in some part of Tanzania, Baluchis uh, started a plantation of uh, rice which was very uh, fruitful to them and this activity was even admired by uh, the first president of Tanzania Julius Nair when he paid a visit to uh, the area and witness what they have done, Baluchis have done in terms of irrigation system and rice plantation and so. Uh, of course, Baluchis' uh, warfare and loyalty has always uh, been as a role model to uh, East African uh, indigenous people and of course they high resistance to natural hardship uh, was another exemplary for indigenous people. Uh, some uh, European explorers such as David Livingstone, um, Speke uh, and Stanley have mentioned uh, Baluchi high resistance to natural hardship in their own books. And of course, some narrative story, for example, about Amir Shahdad Kuta, about uh, Isa bin Baluchi, the first Baluchi who went to uh, Uganda during the time of Buganda dynasty and was appointed as one of the advisors of then king of uh, Buganda. Uh, the other nar narrative story penetrated among East African uh, people. Uh, this is uh, the picture uh, about uh, Julius Nairere. This is President Julius Nairere when he paid a visit to uh, Rujewa and just uh, witnessed the activity of Baluchi and of course was uh, very surprised. Uh, these are pictures about irrigation system they imitated. These are two book have been written about Baluchi scholars, and this is one among quite a number of uh, most Baluchi constructed in either Tanzania, Kenya, or Uganda. They have produced some prominent figures. We have had some uh, Baluchi historical figures. I mentioned about Amir Shehdat Kuta. There are quite a number of other historical figures some administrators, high commissioner, for example, uh, some political figures, uh, some great businessmen, authors, philanthropists, and public figures because of the short, short time. Um, I have to actually skip, but if, if you want to know more, you can uh, actually uh, pose your question. Uh, in this picture, I just want to show you the, some of actually the Baluchi, uh, high actually rank Baluchis. This is Rostam Aziz, uh, a billionaire and one of the greatest businessmen in uh, East Africa. His circulation is more than one billion. Uh, this is Dori Mohammed, the current ambassador of Kenya in uh, Oman. Uh, this is Minister Hamza, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs in Federal Republic of Somali. Um, this is one of uh, the Baluchi uh, author who has written quite a number of books about Swahili language and 
literature and this is uh, one Baluchi MP, Harun Pir Mulla Muhammad. All of them um, um, are great people. Um, in terms of uh, position, I can say very briefly that um, as you could see in the last slide, um, right now, although they are a small minority in East Africa, approximately 20,000, but uh, in terms of economy, politics, culture, and relation, uh, and, and religion, sorry, uh, they are well established minority and are enjoying their own position. These are three pictures about three. Uh, I can say huge factory uh, belonging to Baluchis in uh, Tanzania. Uh, of course, like other minorities, uh, they face some challenges. One of them, political instability in the region. They have faced some civil war, uh, coup d'etat, um, and other actually political problem that affect actually the position. Uh, bitter experience, for example, during the time uh, of civil war in DRC, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, a very few Baluchi uh, were killed or during the time of Idi Amin in uh, Uganda, when he actually expelled all Asian, some quite a number of Baluchi actually had to leave the country wise, they left their own property. Um, there are actually gradual migration, especially youth who prefer to actually go to Western countries. Um, there are some half Baluchis, half uh, either uh, Arab descent or um, half Baluchi, half uh, Swahili people that they are not considering as pure Baluchis. And of course, there is a gap among them and pure Baluchis. Uh, there are some old uh, difficulties or differences actually between um, Baluchis who have migrated from Iran and settled there. They have brought their own differences from Iran and still, you know, uh, these differences um shadowing uh, on them uh, there are slight internal differences especially between youth and elders and uh, the new generation of baluchis are getting distance from local although as i mentioned uh, in all the time they used to have very friendly relation with uh, local people and the last war they had successful migration and settlement in east africa uh, through the tireless effort they established amicable relation with local and steel they preserved it they maintained their identity although they actually never assimilated among um, uh, Africans, they establish mutual cultural and social impacts with local, as I mentioned, they gave some cultural component and of course they got, and uh, I can say the story in East Africa is a unique research issue for other scholars who wants to come in and as the one who has done a very deep research, I welcome whoever is interested, any scholars to come to this very interesting uh, subject. This is Baluchi Mosque in Mombasa, one of the greatest Baluchi, uh, not only mosque, uh, I, I can say actually a, a gathering place for all over the Baluchis. And uh, this is a picture of uh, a Baluchi all woman, um, I can say um, uh, half Baluchi, half African. Um, thank you very much. Uh, to be honest, I have to acknowledge I had a lot to say, but because of the short of time, uh, I have to finish now. Thank you for your very good attention and for your very good comment that I can see here. If you have any question, I'm at your service. Thank you.